Like normally when you think of validating data, you say, well, I'm validating the data itself, right? There's a series of rules it's got to go follow. Does the data match those rules? But with contextual validation, you're saying not only do these rules need to be followed, but there is this context, namely the state of the Bitcoin blockchain, which has to go match up. And it turns out splitting those two is actually really useful because it lets you distinguish between validating the data itself and saying, is it also valid in the context of what's happened on chain? Yeah, maybe to, to bring that back to Bitcoin blockchain itself, right? There can be a valid block, right? That, that follows all the consensus rules, but it is not part of the most heavy proof of work chain. Exactly. Right? So it's, it's some fork child uh, block exactly. that did not get proof of work on top for whatever reason. And, 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 and here's what's really interesting about that, which is when you're, you know, when you're looking at a software maintainability point of view, right? You want rules that are deterministic, you know? You want your validation function to always spit out the same answer for the same input. And by separating validity by itself in, in context, you can make the context part of that not interact with the rest of the validity. All right. So in, in, you know, I'm still working on how do you actually express this in an API, but my goal with proof marshal is for the validity function to say, all right, all this data is valid and if it's valid in context, run all these queries against Bitcoin blockchain. You know, the validity function of the verifier does not do those queries. It doesn't know the state of the Bitcoin blockchain. It just says, for this to be true, all these facts extracted from Bitcoin must be true too. Separately check all those. 